Now, there's a small handful of staple dishes that I come across on nearly every single takeout menu. Alu gobi is one of them. Despite its ubiquity, there's a pretty wide variety of interpretations on how to prepare it. Should it be wet or dry? Should you cook the potato and the cauliflower separately? What's the right blend of spices to use? Usually, I'm from the school of there's no wrong answer. So, I decided to play around with it. Now, the twice-baked potato, on the other hand, it's not as ballyhooed in my experience. Bake a potato in the oven, scoop out the insides, turn them into mashed potatoes, put them back in the shell, and bake them again. First, I started with these small creamer potatoes. I placed these on the rack and roasted them for about 50 minutes in a 350 degree oven until their skins were crisp and they were tender to the touch. I set those to the side to cool off a bit. In the meantime, I began to prepare the alu gobi masala paste. I peeled the knob of fresh turmeric and gave it a rough chop before I followed suit with a piece of ginger. I set those to the side and prepared to toast my spices. I put a small saute pan over a medium high heat and added in a teaspoon each of cumin and coriander seeds along with one tinge of chili. Once I became fragrant and began to darken, I added approximately one tablespoon of fenugreek leaves and removed everything from the pan about 10 seconds later since the leaves can burn really quickly. Into a small food processor, I added the toasted leaves and spices and the chopped ginger and turmeric along with the de-stemmed and de-seeded tainted chili. I added enough water to cover and gave a spin through the blades of my mini food processor until it was well blended into a loose paste. From here, I put a small saucepan over a medium high heat and added about two tablespoons of coconut oil. Once hot, I added the masala paste and stirred vigorously. During this process, I first evaporated most of the water that I had added to spin the paste in the food processor. Removing the water here allows the heat level to go past the 212 degree boiling point of the water and cook in the much hotter coconut oil. I set this to the side and grabbed the cauliflower. So there's all kinds of fun produce these days, and I grabbed this cheddar cauliflower from Lancaster Fresh Farm Co-op. No, it does not taste like cheese, but this orange color looks great with our turmeric lace masala. Since the cauliflower was so tender and I was looking for these small little florets, I tore this whole thing up with my hands and only used a knife when I really needed to. These are going to be topping the potatoes, so I wanted these small little pieces. I tore off any tender stems that didn't have florets and set those to the side to use later. Once I broke down the whole cauliflower, I spooned on a little bit more than half of the bloomed masala paste and rubbed it all over the cauliflower just to coat before seasoning it with salt. Then I distributed it all onto a sheet tray, ensuring it wasn't too crowded. A good shake on the pan always does a good job for me here. Then uh, this went into a hot 450 degree oven to roast until it became tender and dark, about 30 to 45 minutes. This recipe calls for two sauces. This next component is sauce number one. There were a couple of leftovers from the cauliflower prep that I used to make this sauce. First was the bloomed masala paste. I brought the pan back up to temperature over a medium high flame and added in a cup of water. I mixed the paste with the water to form the base of this sauce. Once that came up to a boil, I added in all the cauliflower stems. I let this cook for 20 minutes until the stems softened and added that all to the blender and pureed it until it was smooth. I seasoned to taste and set that to the side in a warm place. This was the quick gobi curry. I love when an alu gobi is finished with herbs and acid to bring everything together. So I thought a bright chutney would be an appropriate flourish. I ripped off about a half of a bunch of cilantro and added that into my mini food processor, along with some leftover green chili scraps I had in the fridge. I added the juice of one lime, a dusting of this tasty sulfurous black salt, and then some toasted chana dal. Then blended the whole thing with some water until smooth, and then just set that to the side. As soon as the potatoes were cool enough to handle, I sliced off the top quarter or third of each and used a small demi tasse spoon to scoop out the insides of these little guys. I made sure to remove just the insides, but I still left enough of the retaining wall, so to speak, so they would support the stuffing. Then it was time to mash these potatoes that I had scooped out. I added a large pinch of salt and a few spoonfuls of coconut yogurt and mashed it until it was mostly smooth. The coconut yogurt adds a fatty tang to these uh, rich potatoes. With everything all prepared, it was time to assemble. I dribbled in some sauce into the potato shell before topping it with mashed potatoes, then topping it with the spice roasted cauliflower. I went ahead and stuffed all the potatoes like this before popping them under the broiler for a second baking. 
The broiler is going to help not just warm these up again, but also add a little char to the cauliflower on top. Once these come out, I plated them up and finished them with the green chutney. A thin outer shell of baked potato packed with cauliflower curry and mashed potatoes and topped with roasted cauliflower and a bright green chutney. And there you have it. Twice baked aloo gobi. This is an awesome party snack to throw out there and a pretty amazing side dish if you were having them with a larger meal. But that's going to be it for me today. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to see you next time. Bye now.